To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. So my dear children, in the earlier chapter, we discussed several questions, several essay type questions regarding the biodiversity lesson part. So this is the continuation of that essay type questions. So we'll be starting from question number 9 onwards, right? Question number 9 onwards will be continue to, will continue to do the questions. So in question number 9, you are given with a certain table. Now in here, Within this table, you have to write down an importance of the given ecosystems. So, first ecosystem given estuary. Estuary. So, estuary is an area or is a place that a river is going to fall down to a certain ocean. So, within that place, my dear children, it avoids the mixing of fresh water with marine water. Okay. It avoids the mixing of fresh water with marine water, estuary. So, that is an importance. Okay. So, we can write down the importance avoids, avoids mixing of fresh and marine water okay avoids mixing of fresh and marine water importance of estuary okay next one rivers so an importance of rivers it is essential for transportation and used to generate hydropower electricity right and also used in fishery industry so you mentioned just a one importance we'll mention just a one okay so we'll mention as to generate hydropower to generate hydropower next one agricultural environments very simple my dear children we receive agricultural crops or we receive agricultural i mean like we receive harvest like paddy and fruits and vegetables from these agricultural lands okay so we can write down the answer to receive to receive vegetables come up paddy come up fruits To receive vegetables, paddy and fruits. Next one, industrial environments. Industrial environments are mainly, produ mainly producing several products, different kinds of products related to different kinds of manufacturing items especially. So we can write down for production of goods. For production of goods. Next one, settlement environments as living habitats. So, as living habitats of human. Right. So, these are the important things that can be seen in these each and every ecosystems. 
estuaries it avoids mixing of fresh and marine water rivers to generate hydropower agricultural environments to receive vegetables paddy and fruits industrial environments for production of goods settlement environments as living habitats of human so these are the important things that we can observe within each of these ecosystems right then we'll move on with the next question question number 10 write an importance of the given ecosystems once more right so lagoon riverine environment inland water reservoirs ocean and wetlands right so we'll write down the importance of these things as well first one lagoon so lagoons contain different kinds of organisms like prawns crabs and mangrove plants so these attract or these areas lagoons attract tourists and also it helps to fishery industry right so we can mention for For fishery industry next one riverine environment riverine environment so important importance in riverine environment is that it provides fertile soil and also soil for bricks and uh, bricks and tile uh, manufacturing purposes okay so we can write down the answer provide raw materials right provide raw materials to produce to produce tiles comma bricks okay so provide raw materials to produce tiles and bricks next one inland water reservoirs inland water reservoirs are mainly used to get water during dry season okay during dry, dry season to get water we use inland water resources especially for agricultural purposes so we can write down the answer so these are reflecting about tanks and vavil okay can you remember inland water reservoirs mainly reflecting about weather right so to get water in dry season right to get water in dry season for agriculture So, to get water in dry season for agriculture in land water reservoirs. Next one, ocean. So, ocean contains different kinds of organisms, fishes. Most of the times we use, we consume these fishes. So, oceans are very important in fishery industry. And as well as my dear children, by using ocean water, we produce common salt so we can write down to produce common salt so to produce common salt we use ocean water next one wetlands very simple my dear children you know that wetlands even we discussed several times about the importance of wetlands wetlands are going to wetlands are marshy lands right uh, that has water throughout a certain time period within a year within a year so these marshy lands okay these marshy lands or these wetlands is going to avoid flood or else it can control flood 
So to control flood. Right. So these are the importance of each and every ecosystems given within this table. Number one, lagoon for fishery industry. Lagoon is important. River and environment provide raw materials to produce tiles and bricks. Inland water reservoirs to get water in dry season for agriculture. Ocean to produce common salt. Wetlands to control flood. Right then. So let's move on with the next question then. Right. The question number 11. So question number 11, you have been asked with several questions. So you have to answer these questions. Okay. Let's see. Describe the meaning of biodiversity. The meaning of biodiversity. Very simple my dear children. It is the differences between species, genetics and as well as ecosystem. So collection of species diversity, ecosystem diversity and my dear children genetical diversity uh, is called collectively as biodiversity. So collection of Collection of species diversity, ecosystem diversity, and genetic diversity. So it is the collection of species diversity, ecosystem diversity and genetic diversity my dear children. This is the one which is referred as the biodiversity. Next one, what is called as a hotspot? A hotspot is a region where a large number of endemic organisms are found. Okay, a hotspot. A place. where large number of large number of endemic organisms are found with high density of biodiversity with a high density of right with a high density of biodiversity Right. So, a hotspot means, my dear children, a place where large number of endemic organisms are found with a high density of biodiversity. Right. Right, my dear children. So, the first question they are asking about, describe the meaning of biodiversity. So, the collection of species, there is a small bit of a mistake in here. So, species. species diversity, ecosystem diversity and genetic diversity collectively known as biodiversity, right, collectively known as biodiversity. Then number two, what is called as a hotspot, place where large number of endemic, endemic organisms, endemic, endemic organisms, endemic organisms, right, 
So here it should be E. Endemic organisms. Right. So a place where large number of here, yeah, number of a place where large number of endemic organisms are found with are found with a high density of biodiversity is referred as a hotspot. Okay. So in Sri Lanka also there are several hotspots, my dear children. It's because of having large number of endemic organisms with a high density of biodiversity and the meaning of the biodiversity is going to reflect about the collection of species diversity, ecosystem diversity and the genetic diversity, right. Okay then, we will move on to the next question. Write three species endemic to Sri Lanka, three species endemic to Sri Lanka. Number one, blue magpie. Ashoka Petya Freshwater small fish Ashoka Petya. Then number three, right? Rilava. Then Bandula Petya is also correct. Jungle fowl. Those are the organisms which are endemic to Sri Lanka. Next one. Write three importance of biodiversity. Three importance of biodiversity, my dear children. Number one. Reduce the competition for food. Reduce the competition for food. Next one, number two. You have to write down three importance of biodiversity. Right? Three important uh, importance of biodiversity. Next one. By biodiversity, my dear children, not only the uh, competition for food, but also the competition for different types of organisms, like for the non-living factors are getting reduced okay non-living factors like water and sunlight okay so we can write that answer to reduce the competition for habitats Then, not only for habitats, but it is going to reduce the competition for reduce the competition for take the slide somewhat up. Non living materials, examples water and sunlight. Right then, so. Question number three, three species endemic to Sri Lanka, blue magpie, asokapetia and rilava and also bandulapetia. Those things are correct. Correct answers for the question number three, which is referring to three species endemic to Sri Lanka, my dear children. Then the question number four, three importance of biodiversity. It is going to reduce the competition for food. 
and also reduces the competition for habitats, then it is going to reduce the competition for non-living materials. Non-living materials, right? So, reduce the competition for non-living materials like water and sunlight, okay. Okay then, so these are the answers for the question number 3 and 4. Then we will move on with the next question. Question number 5, write 3 natural threats to biodiversity. Natural threats to biodiversity, right. Droughts, floods, tsunami waves, then other than that earthquakes. Meteor, uh, meteor collapse, those things are also considered as natural threats to biodiversity. Next one, write three human threats to biodiversity. Human threats to biodiversity. Number one, releasing greenhouse gases. releasing greenhouse gases. Number two, environment pollution. Environment pollution. Environment pollution. Then number three, destruction of forest. destruction of forests. So, three natural threats to biodiversity, droughts, floods, tsunami waves. Three human threats to biodiversity, releasing greenhouse gases, environment pollution, destruction of forests. Okay. Right then, the next question. Write three invasive organisms. Three invasive organisms. Okay. Gandapana. Gandapana. Plant is an invasive organism. Gandapana plant. Next one. Number two. Tank cleaner fish. Right, tank cleaner fish. Then number three, Mannava fish. Okay, so these organisms are invasive organisms, my dear children. Right, so we'll include Gandapana plant. Right. Next one. Write three extinct organisms with the reason. So, you have to write down three extinct organisms with the particular reason. Okay. So, number one, mammoth. Reason for the extinction of mammoth is
Number two, dodo bird. Over hunting or excessive hunting. Next one, number three, dinosaur, right? Dinosaur. So, dinosaur, my dear children, dinosaur. So, dinosaur, dinosaurs were extinct mainly because of the meteor or meteorite collapse, right? So, Meteor heat. Okay. So these are the three types of organisms that got eradicated or extinct because of these particular reasons. Okay. Mammoth got extinct because of the climate change. Dodo bird because of overhunting. Dinosaur because of meteor heat. Then three invasive organisms are Gandapana plant, tank cleaner fish and Mannava fish. Okay. Right. Then the next question, my dear children. Write three features of an ecosystem. Three features of an ecosystem. Number one. Recycle of materials. Recycle of materials. Next one, number two, showing interactions. Right, showing interactions. Next one, number three, flow of energy as a one way, right, flow of energy as a one way path or else a one-way stream both the things are correct no problem so special features related to an ecosystem recycle of materials showing interactions flow of energy as a one-way path these are three characteristic or three features that can be observed within an ecosystem my dear children next one mention three main needs fulfilled by organisms by living living relationships right so by living living relationships what are the three main right what are the three main needs which are fulfilled very simple my dear children number one security Security. Number two, food. And final one, number three, reproduction. So, security, food, and reproduction, all of these factors are being fulfilled by organisms through living, living relationships. Right then, the next question. Write five examples for living, living relationships. Five examples for living, living relationships. Number one, plants provide security. Plants provide security to animals.
plants provide security to animals. Number two, animals feeding on another animal animals feeding on another animal right animals feeding on another animal next one number 3 animals feeding on plants animals feeding on plants number 4 plants providing habitats for animals plants providing habitats plants providing habitats for animals number 5 number 5 dispersal dispersal of plants right dispersal of plant seeds actually dispersal of plant seeds by animals right so five living living relationships Plants provide security to animals. Animals feeding on another animal. Animals feeding on plants. Plants providing habitats for animals. Dispersal of plant seeds by animals. So these are the places where we can observe living living relationships. These are the examples for living living relationships, my dear children. Next question. Write five examples for living non living relationships. Five examples for living and non living relationships. Right. Number one. Plants absorb. water for photosynthesis right plants absorb water for photosynthesis next one number two plants absorb Plants absorb carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Plants absorb carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. Number three, oxygen. Oxygen. 
absorbed by organisms for photosynthesis. So, actually not for photosynthesis, oxygen absorbed by organisms for respiration, right? Not for the photosynthesis. So, oxygen absorbed by organisms for, photo, for respiration, right? For respiration. Number four, number four, water used by, water used by organisms. as a living medium water used by organisms as a living medium next one absorbed by plants for photosynthesis. Right. So, plants absorb water for photosynthesis. Oh, I have already mentioned that thing. So, we will use a different one. So, instead of water, I will mention as sunlight. Sunlight. So, number one, plants absorb water for photosynthesis. Then once again plants absorb carbon dioxide gas for photosynthesis. Oxygen absorbed by organisms for respiration. Water used by organisms as a living medium. Sunlight absorbed by plants for photosynthesis. So these are living and non-living relationships that we can observe within the environment. Right, my dear children, then we will move on with the next question. Question number 13. Write two examples for non-living, non-living relationship. Two examples for non-living, non-living relationships. Number one, rock withering or else so we can write soil erosion. because of water. Right? Soil erosion because of water. Then number two, withering of rocks. because of water comma wind comma sunlight right withering of rocks because of water wind and sunlight and soil erosion because of water can be considered as two examples for non-living, non-living relationships, okay. Then the next question, my dear children, question number 14, write five things that can be done to conserve biodiversity. Ah, now, this is very important, my dear children. What are the things that we can do to conserve biodiversity? How we can conserve biodiversity, right? First and foremost thing is to uh, protect our environment. 
by reduction of environment pollution. So reduction of environment pollution can be done by using several ways. Reduction of greenhouse gases, right? Reduction of improper settlements. Reduction of uh, reduction or else avoiding disposing garbage to the environment. Then my dear children, uh, reforestation. Okay, these things can be considered as the ones or the steps to conserve our biodiversity. So we'll write down our answers then. Number one, growing trees, growing trees. Number two, minimizing. Minimizing greenhouse gases, right? Minimizing the entry of greenhouse gases. Number three. Using, using public transport much as possible using public transport much as possible to minimize the entry of to minimize the entry of Not the entry will include as to minimize the burning of fossil fuel. You know that burning of fossil fuel will create different kinds of problems related to environment. So these problems can be minimized by using public transport as much as possible. Right, so by that way we can minimize the burning of fossil fuel. Next one, number four, reduction of reduction of improper land use. Reduction of improper land use. Number five, comma, reuse, recycle, comma, reuse of materials like plastic. Right. So, five things that can be done to conserve biodiversity, my dear children. Number one, growing trees, minimizing entry of greenhouse gases, using public transport much as possible, using public transport much as possible to minimize the burning of fossil fuel. Reduction of improper land use, then recycle, comma, reuse of materials like polythene and plastic. So, by doing these steps or by following these special things, we can avoid 
right or else we can conserve the biodiversity okay right my dear children so we have discussed several questions related to the biodiversity part okay so we have discussed several mcq questions and now we have discussed several uh, essay type questions related to the biodiversity okay so with that one i'm going to finish up the lesson part my dear children I hope that you got a good sound knowledge regarding the biodiversity lesson, right? So, on another day, I'll be meeting you with the next lesson, with our next lesson, which is regarding to the artificial environment and the greens concept. So, till then, it's time to say goodbye. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.